defense. <laughs> More than those oh, Steve Hunt, hunt. Steve Weatherford running for it. Weatherford gets the first down. Down the sideline, out of bounds. A pickup of 23 yards. Weatherford gets the first down. Like, this is a call to arms. If you want possible, if we want possible, we have to do what we're capable of. You know, if we do what we're capable of, God will do the impossible. Pastor Keith always says this, if we do what we're capable of doing, God will complete the puzzle. God will do the impossible. Like, we got to give men something to respect, and we got to give God something to work with. That, to me, is, is being possible. Weatherford running for it. Weatherford gets the first down. Down the sideline and out of bounds. I've been married for almost 15 years. I've got six kids. I'm a Super Bowl champion. I was twice named the fittest man in the NFL. Uh, I was the Walter Payton Man of the Year, Community Servant Award winner. Um, I've lived a, a, a pretty radical life, man. At about 11 years old, I was invited to go to uh, an event where they were gonna have some of the like, biggest, baddest athletes than any of us had ever seen. And I was a huge WWF wrestler. Notice I didn't say WWE, I'm talking old school. I'm talking Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. And I remember walking in and the guy that had the mic was one of the biggest dudes that I had ever seen. And throughout the course of two hours, I watched this guy bend bars over his head, smash bricks. And then the last thing is he invited the cop from the back of the room to come up and put handcuffs on him. And I'm like front row, I'm 11 years old. And I can remember like setting my chin on the stage up staring at this guy and then he's he's talking to us and he's sharing his testimonies he's, he's sharing like where he gets his power and his strength from and then he invited people to to invite Jesus to to come into their heart and to repent of their sins and so I was like well I don't, I don't I'm not so sure and he's like I'm gonna prove to you the power of God and he counts the you know, down from 10 and he, he made it super dramatic. I mean, these 10 seconds lasted like three minutes. And then he got, and then he got to one and then boom, he comes up. And all I remember is chains flying over my head. And I'm like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And then he finished his altar call to receive Jesus. And I remember receiving Jesus that night. But the reason I did it wasn't because his incredible strength is because every time that I saw wrestlers on TV and they did these amazing feats, they would raise their hand and they would say, you know, a Hulkamania, go to the back of the room and buy my VHS and buy my t-shirts and eat my vitamins and do things like me. But then there was this other guy that I saw and he looked the same. He had the same boldness. He had the same strength. He had the same confidence but we had a, an opportunity to tell you where his strength came from. He said it comes from Jesus Christ. And so I remember getting his autograph and, and his name was Keith Graff. So one of the most incredible nights of my life, my life changed obviously that night. All of the things and all of the desires and all of the possibilities that I thought like a Christian could be. It was in that moment when I saw Keith Graff that I saw like possibility to the point where I was one of the skinniest kids in my class, but I remember as soon as that night happened, like my mom getting so mad at me because every time that the ads would get delivered on Sunday, like that's where we would find our deals. That was like Google back then. I would rip those up in Jesus' name or anytime we had like iron hangers, I was bending those over my head, looking at the mirror, you know, trying to replicate what I saw and ended up earning scholarships for um, all of the sports that I played in high school, I, you know, that was a possibility. Like if there was a, a sport that I could play and there was a possibility I could contribute to the team, um, I did it, you know, and then earned a scholarship to play football at the University of Illinois, um, ended up becoming an All-American there, and, and then an opportunity to, to make it into the National Football League um, where I played 10 years. You know, and I truly believe because of my exposure uh, to Keith Craft and the possibility of what he showed and even how he's living his life now is like he's not just a pastor, he's not just a businessman, he's not just a husband, he's not just a father. Everything he does and everything he places his hand to, he places his hand to in excellence. You know, how you do anything is how you do everything. And we're playing Tom Brady, you know, the New England Patriots. My mom's there, my dad's there, my brother's there, grandma, everybody that you care about is there. And everybody that's not there is probably watching on TV. I had the best game of my life, you know, to the point, I'm a punter, you know, like 
The punter usually doesn't sway the game that much, but in this particular game, I was able to, to come up with some incredible plays. And Now Weatherford, a great off-season acquisition. We'll try to pin New England deep, and he bounces it at the two-yard line, and it's a great punt. Weatherford so instrumental in so many wins this season. I ended up having three more punts that game, and every single one of my punts left Tom Brady starting inside of his 10-yard line and two of those inside of the five-yard line, which is a Super Bowl record, which to me is like crazy to think um, that I could impact a game that big and in that manner when you only get one shot. But really where I feel like this, this my life story took the most massive shift was when the game was over and you've got all these people telling you like, oh my gosh, like you were so amazing. Oh my gosh, congratulations. Oh my gosh, you're a Super Bowl champion. And all of the confetti and your mom, your dad, and all these people telling you all these amazing things. And then you go back to your hotel room and it's the first time that you're by yourself and walking into my hotel room and walking past my bed and then walking up to the window. And I remember looking down and I could tell how happy these people were. And I remember watching these people and taking a deep breath and before I could like fully like exhale it out, I remember like this deep, dark, like depression come over me because I didn't feel any different. You know, like all the sacrifice, all the discipline, like all the grind that went into like the unbelievable moment that just happened, but you think that you would feel different. It didn't make me feel any different, you know, and, and I believe that's what every man and woman truly want in this earth is they don't want, they don't just want a, a vision. They don't just want a mission. Like to me, getting to the NFL was, it was like a vision that I had and it was a mission that I went on. But what we really need is purpose. And I knew that this vision and this, this mission that I went on wasn't my purpose. I knew in that moment that this was never going to fulfill me the way that I needed to be fulfilled. So I played three more seasons and ended up retiring. And uh, I was invited to go to this, this men's event called Emerge out in the middle of the desert. On the very first night, they brought the keynote speaker up and we're sitting about midway back in the tent. And I'm sitting there with my son um, and my, my best buddy, Nick Unsworth, and he's sitting right next to me. And um, they call the, the speaker up and they introduce him. And as soon as the speaker took the microphone, and spoke into the mic. And mind you, I'm like 150 yards back, so I can only see that this dude is like a big dude. As soon as he spoke into the microphone, it was like I got hit by a lightning bolt. And I like almost like started sweating. I'm like, and so I, I looked at Nick next to me. I'm like, what's this guy's name? And he's like, um, he's looking at the thing. He's like, I think it's Keith Kraft. And I didn't recognize the name. I'm like, oh, Keith Kraft. So I punch it into Google. And the first picture that pops up is like a picture from like 1996. And this dude's got a mullet, just like I remember him. And he's breaking bricks in Jesus name. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the guy. And so as my mind is, is racing and I'm like doing the math and I'm like, how old is this guy? Could he be the guy that was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you know? on this year and then I started doing the math. I'm like, I know I got saved on this day and I did the math backwards. And before he got done speaking, I realized that it was 25 years to the day that he was on that stage. And so knowing that information and he got done speaking, I like stood up and like sprinted around all of these people to the front of the tent. And I finally get, get right up to Keith and I'm like, Pastor Keith, you're never gonna believe this. And then inside of 60 seconds, I like dumped out my entire Wikipedia page, everything that I've ever achieved. And I connected the dots on how he inspired me uh, to do and develop myself in these different ways, you know? And then I remember him standing there and be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, take my number, like, let's talk later. And I remember going back to my seat uh, to Nick Unsworth and I'm like, Nick, where's my son at? And he was like, oh bro, you're never gonna believe it. He's at the front, he just gave his life to Jesus. And I'm like, I mean, at that point, dude, I'm like melted to the floor. Like there's no denying that God is real. And so I like, I knew, I knew that God had reinserted Keith back into my life because I was hungry for him. And I believe that I was showing that to God by like taking my family to church every Sunday and getting plugged in in men's prayer every Tuesday at 5.30 a.m. and getting into my devotionals. Like it was months that I was doing that. And then I just, I just stayed in the space where, where I believe miracles could happen.
you know, and God delivered a miracle. But, but here's the deal, like there might be people that are like listening to this testimony or whatever, and they're going, like, well, I feel like I'm in the spot that like miracles happen. It's not happening for me. But I feel like the only, the only place that like unbelievable things happen is when you're in an uncomfortable place. Like I've been there before too, but I can promise you this miracles ha don't happen when you're sitting on your butt in the seats. Like this is a call to arms. If you want possible, if we want possible, we have to do what we're capable of. You know, if we do what we're capable of, God will do the impossible. Pastor Keith always says this, if we do what we're capable of doing, God will complete the puzzle. God will do the impossible. Like we got to give men something to respect and we got to give God something to work with. That to me is, is being possible. So if there's an area of our life, you know, if our marriage, if our finances, if our physical fitness, if our relationships can be developed, if it's possible, we're capable, then we're called to that. Because I believe that excellence is what's gonna attract people into our lifestyle. It's gonna attract people into our church. It's gonna attract people into a relationship ultimately with Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, that's what I believe Pastor Keith is calling all of us to do, is to make disciples. So then after the, the Emerge event, and after my son getting saved and me realizing that God sent Pastor Keith back into my life because I saw another picture of possible. And so he started coaching me one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom and everything that he's given me, I'm taking notes, I'm recording it, I'm, I'm re-watching it, and I'm implementing all of the wisdoms, all the systems into my life, into my business, into my marriage. And my wife is like, man, like, I really like how this guy thinks. Like, I really love how he wants you to start leading our marriage. And after about eight months of that, I asked my wife, I'm like, you know, what do you think about possibly moving to Frisco, Texas? And, just being closer to Keith. She's like, well, is he gonna coach you anymore? I'm like, not necessarily, but it's gonna give me an opportunity to be in his church, to be around his marriage, to see how he leads his men, to see how he does relationship. And she's like, I think that's a great idea, uh, but let's pray about it, because that's a big move. We've got five kids and I'm pregnant. And, and we prayed that prayer together. I remember kneeling by her bed and, uh, and thinking we, you know, maybe if God does this, it'll be a week or a month. Dude, it was six hours later. We get a phone call and our landlord's like, oh yeah, uh, that beautiful house that you're in, um, well, we're, we're really nervous about this pandemic and we're gonna sell it in 60 days, you have to be out. Dude, I got a family of five and my wife is pregnant. We ended up coming here without even having a place, of, a house to rent yet. We literally packed up our place and started driving to Texas. Pastor Keith says it all the time, is your alignments determine your assignments. We need to get around people that are living in the possible. And that's what Pastor Keith did for me. Pastor Keith allowed me to see what excellence looked like in family, what excellence looked like in marriage, what excellence looks like in business. You know, like we have an assignment to go forward and go out to all of the nations and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them everything that God has commanded of us. So like the warrior is not a t-shirt, the warrior is a mindset. It's the same way that Pastor Keith, you know, when, he, when I look at him, I see possibility. That's what it represents. He's not my pastor, he's possibility.